to Hunter Tune. Today I'm going to be dyno tuning this EK hatchback. It has a B18 B1 completely stock, um, no head studs or nothing, and it just has a simple turbo kit on it. Looks like a ram horn manifold, <clears throat> looks like the uh, Rev 9 or something similar. Uh, tile wastegate, uh, looks like an eBay turbo, and he also has some little stuff like the he's got the push lock airline fittings for the vacuum lines which is really nice i like using that stuff got all that stuff on my mustang over here um, which <clears throat> i plan on doing i actually did film some video of talking about this car and all the parts on it and stuff like that so <clears throat> let me know if you guys want to see that um we actually did get get the car out and go racing um there's some other stuff i'm doing to it but we should have a solid eight second ripper i'm hoping very soon with the mustang so stay tuned for that guys and uh very excited to show you more content on my twin turbo ls mustang but in the meantime there's work to do on this honda <clears throat> so we got a hks blow off valve regular looks like two inch or two and a half inch intercooler piping um pretty nice little setup simple um but should be effective so it's got a pro series skunk 2 intake manifold which is pretty much just like a b16 manifold you know basic uh honda manifold uh it has the hunter tuned flex style injectors um these are around 900 cc 950 and at higher pressures they're over a thousand cc this setup probably could have got away with doing the normal style truck injectors uh, but some people are confused and they think they can't run uh, E85 on the normal style injectors, but we run E85 on all the injectors that I sell. They're all E85 compatible and they all work. The normal style just come out of a normal style vehicle versus the other ones came out of a flex style vehicle. So, um, but we never had issues running E85 on the, on the normal ones either. So uh, he did get a set of top hats as well from my website, a uh, whole package right there, just bolted it on and here we are, so it's got AEM fuel pressure regulator, we'll have to check our base pressure, and uh, he also has a content sensor on the return line, so this sensor right here is actually measuring the amount of alcohol in the fuel. So that's going to tell the computer how much alcohol or E85 is present on the, in the fuel system. That will, in turn, I can actually tune to tell when we have higher E85, we can have more boost, we can have more timing, we can make more horsepower safely. Um, unfortunately, this car got dropped off with E85 in it already. So to do the content tuning properly, um, I would have to tune the car on pump gas and then tune the car on E85. So it'd be almost two tunes kind of thing. So I think we're just gonna tune it on whatever's in the tank right now. I think it's E85, he drained it and filled it with E85 before he brought it here. Um, so we're gonna be putting, um, Whatever tune or whatever power I feel is okay on E85 with this bone stock engine, we're gonna run. So it does have a Hondata four bar map sensor. Um, I don't see any issue making at least 300 horsepower with this thing. If it had head studs, I wouldn't see why we couldn't push it even farther, 350, 400. Um, I mean, realistically, this car would probably make 350 wheel pretty easily on E85 without head studs, but it eventually will push a gasket. Um, you keep them conservative, 250, 300 wheel, um, you usually don't have issues. I remember back in the day, one of my first Hondas that I ever like tuned myself was a B18 B1 LS. And it had an eBay turbo kit and it was on pump gas and I ran, I think 18 or 20 pounds of boost. And uh, it cooked the head gasket completely, but it ran mid 12s on street tires and I had a ball with that car. Uh, that was a long time ago, but I had like, back in the day, like I just, you know, you just sent it. You didn't care. Whatever. If it breaks, it breaks. You learn from your mistakes. And we would come back from a run with that car and it would literally sound like coffee was brewing under the hood because fucking shit was boiling everywhere. But now I have a lot better understanding. This was like 10 years ago, but now I have a lot better understanding of <clears throat> how to do stuff safely and how to make stuff last so you can beat on it for days to come and not have uh, issues with you know breaking parts because let's be honest <clears throat> these hondas and these motors are getting a lot harder to find so the more we break these parts 
and the more we damage these parts, the more expensive the parts that we need are going to get. So if we can keep them alive longer, um, <clears throat> you know, it's just better in the long run, you know what I mean? Because like I said, the parts are just getting a lot harder to find. Um, I mean, even transmissions, like <clears throat> if I build a drag car, which I might do something with this little EF over here, um, <clears throat> transmissions are, you know, they're gonna get even more scarce, which you can buy replacement parts, but I'm saying like for the guy that's on a budget, you wanna kinda keep the parts you got alive um, as long as you can, so we don't have to, you know, fork out all the money. Uh, because these cars always have been budget oriented in my mind, like the Honda Civic, was always like the car you could go pick up for like eight hundred or a thousand dollars, or sometimes even cheaper. I've bought these cars for three, two hundred dollars, you know. But now, if you find anything decently worth half of a shit, um, maybe you're spending a couple thousand bucks on the car alone, and half of them don't even run right. <clears throat> so by the time you get them running right and whatever, you're still got, you know, you still got quite a bit of money into it. So, like I said, these cars aren't necessarily as budget oriented as they used to be, <clears throat> at least in my opinion. And that's why I tell a lot of people that are on like a, a tighter budget uh, to build an LS because you can find those things all day long. I mean, I have like my own little junkyard of LS engines sitting back here, five threes, four eights, six liters. Um, you know, you can get them for a hundred or two hundred dollars a piece. Find a clapped out Fox body or whatever, and you're going tens or nines or fuck. Some of these guys are going even faster than that on bone stock. $200 engines with a $300 camshaft and a $200 set of set of valve springs, you know, and a, a basic turbo kit and shit like that. It doesn't take a whole lot to make those things fly. But Hondas were always my bread and butter. They were always my, uh, what kind of got me into the car scene and uh, what, you know, my true passion started from so i really love these cars and i always see the appeal that guys have with them so anyways we're gonna dive right into this thing um kind of checked it over i actually started it up and pulled it in here and i noticed that the wide band was not working inside the car also he had to tape his window because when he brought it here the window like fell off the tray off the track it's funny like i sold a boat yesterday and the damn thing wouldn't start it's never failed to start at all and then I go to sell it and the guy shows up to buy it and the damn thing wouldn't start and I'm like man I'm gonna look like an idiot right now but I swear I've never had an issue until you know until you need to have something work like you know when you drop a car off here or whatever you know it that's how it always goes like when you need it to work it doesn't work and then you fucking don't care and it works fine <laughs> So anyways, uh, when I turn the key here, we have our gauges powering up. And you can see that the wideband just sits at 14.7. Now this is typical. Uh, these things usually do sit right at 14.7 like this, but eventually they're going to search around for, um, they're gonna heat the sensor and it, the gauge is gonna search around for a little bit and then it's gonna read oxygen. It's gonna read all lines or fully lean which means that it's all oxygen because the car's not running. There's no carbon actually passing the sensor. Um, so for it to be just sitting here at 14.7, we have an issue. Now, this could be that the gauge itself is bad or the sensor is bad or whatever. So what I did already is I actually unplugged his O2 sensor and I plugged in my own. And he actually has his plug-in way down here by the ECU for the O2 sensor. Um, I unplugged his, I plugged mine in, and there was no change. So now, we're actually going to be tearing into his gauge pillar to see uh, maybe if something's got unplugged back here. Nope, this all looks good, it's all plugged in. Um, so the next thing that we'll try is... We can... Um, unplug the gauge and plug a different gauge in. I gotta see if I have a gauge like this that takes the 4.9 sensor. Typically all the wide AM widebands that I have that take the 4.9 sensor um, are the um, the X series. They're like the newer 
uh, gauge, which I don't have any issues with. I do, however, have a lot more issues with these style gauges, the smaller ones. So these are the ones I typically run. But I gotta see if I got a gauge laying around here that we can just plug into that thing and see if it'll work. Slim pickets. So I'll pick up with you guys. I'll pick up with you guys in a minute when I if I find a gauge here that we can plug in and try to diagnose this wideband. Alright guys, so I just talked to the guy that owns a car and uh, he said that uh, it's okay, we're just gonna tune it with the wideband that I got here. And then uh, he's gonna either get a replacement gauge for his because the gauge is bad. I plug in a new sensor, nothing works. Um, and I don't have this style gauge here. I only stock the X series AEM widebands, which, like I said, I don't have as many issues with. So, um, we're gonna be tuning it with one of those. Just got it installed into the car. I got the car all strapped down onto the dyno here, the treadmill. And uh, we're gonna go over some stuff before we get rolling. I'm gonna check the oil, check the coolant, um, checked our fuel pressure, and our fuel pressure is pretty low. It's only around 20 PSI of fuel pressure, which we're gonna want at least a 40 PSI base pressure. Uh, these injectors obviously will flow more with more pressure, but a lot of times the fuel pumps can't keep up. This one has an AEM 340 fuel pump, um, which those pumps, anything that's not like the Walbro 450 or 525, I tend to have issues with maintaining higher fuel pressures like 70, 80 PSI. Um, if we run a 60 PSI base pressure, when boost comes in, it's one to one, so we need to have a fuel pump that can keep up with that pressure demand. Um, and the only ones that work well, that I've had experience with, are the Wally 450 or the Wally 525. Don't even bother with anything else, in my opinion. Um, especially when you're running E85 like this guy is. Um, we're also gonna be tuning it on E85 only today. And uh, later on, he may bring the car back on pump gas so we can actually do the blend tune of pump gas and E85 so the Honda can actually, um, you know, decipher between the two and change the tune accordingly, which I've done on the channel before if you guys haven't seen that video. I've done an ethanol blend tune with the content sensor. You guys will have to go check that video out um, if you're impatient and don't want to wait for this car to come back to see. So, um, I'm gonna get to checking some stuff over here. We got a three port Mac valve. I'm gonna double check the plumbing on that, make sure that's all good. Um, we'll probably pull a plug out, make sure we got the right spark plugs in it. We'll have to cap off this throttle body nipple here because that's gonna be a boost leak. So we'll cap that off and then uh, just kind of double check some stuff here. I'll get the dyno all synced up and then we'll move on to in the car with the laptop so we can see what's really going on with this thing. Also, I'm gonna adjust that fuel pressure up to at least 40. Uh, probably start at 40 PSI. Um, currently, when we start the car, uh, the wideband's reading like 19, 19.5. It's pretty lean. So I bet you if we bump that pressure up to 40, this guy got a base map from like HA Motorsports. If we bump that fuel pressure up to 40 or 60, I bet you we'd be a lot closer on the tune or on the wideband for air fuel ratio. More pressure equals more uh, richer air fuel. All right, so we added some water, we added some coolant, uh, we added some oil. Uh, it was about a quart low, and the coolant was about a cup and a half low. It sounds like we got a little exhaust leak down here. Uh, I don't know if it's from the downpipe flange or where it's coming from, but I definitely hear it. And I don't know if you guys can see in the car, wideband in there we are lean lean is mean right not so I'm gonna adjust this fuel pressure here so we're a little over 20 right now and I'm gonna adjust it up to a little over 40. So we're gonna loosen this jam nut on the regulator, and then we're gonna turn in the Allen screw in to put more pressure on the spring so it takes more pressure to overcome 
that regulator, which in turn will give us a higher fuel pressure, which will also richen up the mixture. So I'm gonna do that quick, show you what happens. Now we're styling. A little bit over 40. And our air fuel richened up a whole point. So instead of 18.5, it's now 17.5, which is still too lean. So we'll have to get into the computer and richen up the mixture on the ECU. So I'm gonna do that, get the air fuel around 13.5 to 15. Um, so it, it'll idle a little bit more steady too, even though it's not too bad right now. These injectors, I'm telling you, they run great. No, no product plug or nothing here. Um, so these, uh, once we get the idle figured out, air fuel wise, uh, then we'll set our ignition timing and we'll make sure that our ignition timing matches what the ECU is telling it to do. So I'm gonna go get my laptop quick from charging and then uh, I'll bring you guys along in the car. All right guys, so I uh, went into the computer here, got the file off of the Honda, which I've been needing to be on the internet lately. Like I have to have my hotspot on my phone because I don't have Wi-Fi at my shop. I have to have my hotspot hooked up to my laptop in order to have Honda out of work, which is kind of weird, but it's how it is. Um, so I went in, did some adjustments on the tune, and uh, we got a very steady air fuel now, uh, a little high 13s. So we got a little steady uh, base to work with, and uh, we're setting our ignition timing right now. This is the sync option, so we can go out to the car and hook a timing light up and verify that 16 means 16 at the engine. So we, I got my timing light out there right now. We're verifying that. And then uh, I went through and did some stuff to the ignition table too, uh, just to kind of make it a little better. And I went through and I turned like protections on, have the cooling fan coming on at 180 degrees instead of uh, where it was set at 199. I also set the overheating protection stuff on. I set the TPS, um, calibrate the TPS. It was at 2% at idle which now it's at zero at idle and 100 at wide open. Did all that. I feel like a lot of this stuff's repetitive, but you guys seem to like watching the Honda Dyno videos. So I'll just do the same thing over again, like I do on all of them. We even got a fast and furious tachometer in here. So I'll definitely know how many rip to give it. So timing is set. Uh, fuel pressure set, check the oil, check the coolant. Now, sync up the dyno, and uh, let's uh, tune this thing and floor it. See what kind of power we can make. I also uh, went through and I was checking out his duty cycle for the uh, boost controller that he has in here. Um, also set some stuff up to make this thing idle a little bit better. It was idling around 1100 or so and I went in and I pulled some timing out at idle and then I added some at low RPM idle just in case this everything ever ugh, just in case this thing ever decides to dip below like 700 RPM it's gonna hit that timing wall and that timing is gonna bump it up to keep it alive from dying. Um, I usually do that trick on a lot of stuff learned it from Matt Happel sloppy mechanics works a lot better on LS stuff, but it does still work on Hondas as well. So I like to do that. Um, and then, uh, let's see here, the boost control. He already had a lot of this stuff set up on his file and the duty cycle that he had was 25%. We're gonna set this at one or zero for now. Um, and we're gonna see what the car makes on wastegate pressure. And then we can always add duty cycle after to make sure that all that stuff works. And then we, once we want to turn the boost up, we'll put duty cycle in the uh, boost controller.
All right, guys, I'm driving the car right now. We're gonna iron out a couple of rich spots on the cruising here. So we're just gonna kind of follow what we're map tracing right now, and we're gonna be able to see some rich spots or some lean spots here. We're gonna pull out some fuel in order to get this thing happy. some highway driving right now making sure that highway speeds are good for air fuel map tracing watching adjusting this is all looking really good these injectors run like stock guys I'm telling you they they're super easy to tune in my opinion um, they work good so we'll give it a little throttle here we dip lean for a second so we may have to splash a little in these columns here. Just to kind of even that out. So when we give it a little throttle, see it still wants to do that little catch up on the air fuel. cooling fan and everything is working uh, currently the car is running a little warm I don't have a fan in front of it right now so we're gonna make sure that the cooling fan on the, make sure the cooling fan on the engine is actually running because it shouldn't be running hot but we'll see that's why we always watch temperatures while we do this stuff on the dyno all right so I did find a coolant leak on the car I was smoking a little bit under the hood and uh, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this, but this heater hose, the loop line, it is actually leaking out of where the clamp is. So sometimes these stock Honda clamps, you can see it leaking right there. Right there. So sometimes, like I said, those stock Honda clamps, the ones you got to pinch with the pliers to pull off, sometimes those springs they're just not oh wow my camera's all full of coolant now let me wipe you off Ugh, probably looks like shit um but anyways sometimes those spring clamps they lose their tension um so we could easily fix this with a hose clamp i'm hoping so um that's just something to note uh i don't really like using these style clamps unless you buy them new but uh yeah warm gear hose clamp uh, seems to work best. We're going to uh, see if we can get that taken care of quick and uh, move on. All right, so I hope I fixed that leak and we're gonna move on and do our first pull. I had to pull a ton of fuel out or I'm going to have to pull a ton of fuel out because as soon as I got into any sort of boost, air fuel was like 850, like super rich. So pull some fuel out of it before we even start here and then um, We'll see how much boost it's on and what kind of power it makes.
right, so fueling, still a little rich probably. Um, that was only three pounds of boost. And we made 193 horsepower. So like I said, it was on three pounds of boost only. Uh, the curve is looking okay. You can see right where peak power comes in and it gets flat and then it kind of creeps up at the end probably because it's trying to hold back three pounds of boost, which is kind of difficult to run that low of boost. But we're gonna turn that solenoid on here and see if we can get a little bit more boost out of it. So I'm gonna go in to the tune and I'm gonna turn change the duty cycle from zero or one, which is where I usually always start off at, just to kind of get every get a feel for stuff. Um, and I'm gonna go in here to boost control and I'm gonna change this to 25 where he had it. Um, and kind of see what the car does with 25% duty cycle in it. So we didn't pick up any boost. Uh, I put 40% in the duty cycle. Uh, nothing, it's not picking up power at all. It's overlaying every run. Literally doing the same exact thing. So um, we're gonna have to look into seeing if we have a boost leak somewhere or if the wastegate is plumbed properly. So we're gonna check that stuff and then uh, I'll let you know what I find. So I think I might have found the culprit of the no boost. And it looks like this coupler right down here. Yeah, I just pulled that out. I haven't touched this and I just pulled that right out. So this clamp was actually set up really high. So I'm gonna loosen this clamp so it goes over the pipe a little better. And then I'm gonna clamp it down with my ratchet and hopefully we'll have some more boost after that. All right, let's try it again. I got that pipe installed nice and tightly. Well, I'll give her another go. I'm trying to balance you guys on a slick right now. Literally, you guys are sitting on this tire. Stay. Stay. Okay. Let her rip. Paint her chip. Keep looking for more boost leaks because this thing's probably got another one somewhere all right guys so i'm going through the piping on this car because this was rubbing on the traction bar doesn't seem to have a hole in it or anything and this coupler off the turbo was kind of a really crappy angle uh, you can see kind of the clamp mark where the clamp was so you can see where the clamp was riding it was like diagonal on the coupler and it was only grabbing that top part of the coupler but i don't think it was leaking from here um but it's only making like two or three pounds of boost and i got 40 percent duty cycle in it which uh figured something's got to be going on here i don't know what it is uh so i pulled the wastegate off and i think i might have found a solution i also checked the turbo make sure it was spinning all right um and i double checked all the other couplers and stuff and they all seem to be okay uh, the piping doesn't really fit the greatest on the off the hot side here, off the turbo, this pipe. But all the rest of it seems okay after I fixed that other coupler. And I pulled the wastegate off just to kind of look. And I verified on the camera 
I watched and listened to the video and it does sound like the wastegate's opening. So um, that would in turn tell us that the gate is just set at a really low boost. So this is the wastegate. I pulled it off and you can see our fittings here, top and bottom. So for the boost controller to work, the bottom has to get teed and uh, goes into the solenoid and then feeds access pressure into the top um, to keep the, the wastegate shut to make more boost. So when you force air into the top of the wastegate, you need to make sure that all the other holes are sealed off. This one's not sealed off. So the, any air that we're introducing into the top of the wastegate here is getting pushed right out. So in turn, it's not gonna do anything. It's gonna just push the air in that should be making more boost and it's leaking out right here. So we have to take this off and plug it. So I'm gonna do that you know, tidy up this coupler a little bit better, or I'm gonna try to as best as I can with what we got here. Get this all back installed, put the wastegate back on, try it again with that plugged off, and see if we can get some more boost out of this thing. All right guys, got it all back together. Um, hopefully it makes more boost. We'll see what kind of power we can make. Now that the boost controller is actually gonna do something. some more boost uh, I was in the car tuning and did a couple pulls to kind of feel out uh, how it was gonna act this thing still like lights off really slow which usually an LS I mean this turbo might be a little big it looks like a 62 mil um, or something like that this thing would do a lot better with like a 55 58 from huntertune.com just because properly sized turbos make a way more fun of a street car you know if the turbo is a little big Makes a good drag car, but it doesn't really make a good street car. Um, and I'll show you exactly why here. And of course we did make way more power. Um, 282 horsepower, 288 horsepower on the second one. I cleaned up some fueling and you can tell we did make some more boost, but it is only above like 5,500 RPM where it's really picking up power. So um, I would love to have that power curve a lot broader. like have this torque all through here. Pretty much double the size of the torque uh, torque band, just to make it longer. The longer you can make torque stay in it, the more fun it's gonna be, really. So, um, that's pretty good. Uh, I saw about 10 and a half to 12 pounds of boost. That was 12 and a half pounds peak boost. Um, and that yielded us 288 horsepower. Um, probably gonna put a couple more, play with the solenoid a little bit more and see if we can get a little more out of it. And uh, we'll go from there. more duty cycle in it still couldn't get any more boost uh, so we're still making the same power uh, I'm still playing with some stuff I'm gonna play with the frequency on the solenoid see if I can get this thing to light off a little faster because like I said this turbo is really kind of lazy on this engine um, I wish it would light off faster but it is what it is so maybe he'll get a smaller turbo or a VTEC head to utilize this turbo because right when this thing comes alive it hits a rev limiter so um, 
needless to say, it's doing a lot better than it was. I can't get this thing to spool any faster. Um, so that's probably gonna be it on it. 290 horse, about 288 I think we got out of it. Um, turbo is just pretty big and the exhaust might be slowing the turbo down a little bit too. Going through a full exhaust um, might be slowing it down. The more free breathing you can keep the exhaust, the faster the turbo can, can spin up. Um, so that's another thing. Um, I did the best I could on this thing. Um, like I said, it's still way better than what it was. We fixed a lot of little issues. Um, and now, hopefully he can be happy for a little while, maybe change some stuff up in the future and come back. Um, but yeah, so like I said, don't over, over turbo your car. Don't put too big a one on. I mean, I put that size turbo on my Mustang, two of them, but, uh, and this thing lights off like now, so. Hopefully you guys will be excited to see this thing. I'm actually in the process of uh, putting a set of 355 rear gears in it. Uh, currently the car has four tens and we're gonna go to a 355. Hopefully help the car get off the hole, out of the line a little bit better and um, be able to mile an hour up top because the 410 tops out at like 145 mile an hour with uh, 7,500 RPM and Right now, I don't really want to spin the engine much higher RPM wise. I'd rather kind of wait, um, but yeah. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. Have a great night and a better tomorrow. We'll see you later.